Hello dear friends of science, hello dear sly foxes, sly wolves and cub scouts. Welcome to today's science workshop on the topic density or how does a lava lamp work. I'm Professor Cyfox and together with my friend and assistant Gray Gaugrim, who's actually a magician wolf, we will study scientifically how a lava lamp works we will also build a kind of lava lamp, actually more of a bubble lamp with simple means. I'll explain everything here on the blackboard and Gray Gaugrim will conduct the experiments in the kitchen. If you've seen our invitation to this workshop, then maybe you already have the materials handy. A container, water, oil, food coloring, visit tablets and a pipette. But you can just as well watch our video and later do the experiment. If we want to understand the lava lamp, we have to deal with density. Density is what determines whether an object will sink or swim. This is a container with water, an aquarium. Gray will now put two soda cans into this water, regular soda and sugar-free soda. One can swims, the other sinks. One can has a lower density than water and the other can has a higher density than water. But what is density anyway? Have you ever heard about density? Well, density is the weight of one liter. Gray is now going to measure the density of water. For this we need exactly one liter of water, put it on the scales and it weighs about 1000 grams. 1000 grams in one liter is the density of water, of cold water. Let's measure and compare the density of oil. We need one liter of oil and we see it weighs only 926 grams. Oil has a lower density than water, 926 gram in one liter. So oil will swim on water or water will sink down in oil. By the way, air also has a density. One liter of air weighs just about one gram. So of course air will swim in water and also in oil. In the lava lamp we also have two liquids and their densities are essential. The lava is an opaque wax which when cold has a higher density than the clear other liquid in the lamp. We will later build our lava lamp using water and oil. But before we do this one more important thing about density. Density changes with temperature. The warmer a liquid is, the smaller its density, the more likely, the more easily it swims. So warm water has a lower density than cold water and will actually swim on cold water. And now Gray will show you guys that warm water can in fact swim on cold water. For that we need cold water first, very cold water and then we need hot water, very hot water. To distinguish the water we use foot coloring. Gray colors the cold water blue and the warm water red. And now for a pretty difficult experiment. Gray puts the foil on top of the glass with the hot water and turns the glass upside down. Note that the water does not spill. This is science too, a consequence of the air pressure. Maybe we'll talk about that another time. Gray now puts the hot water in the upside down glass on top of the cold water and pulls out the separating foil. And nothing happens. The two waters do not mix. The hot water actually swims on the cold water. Even if he turns the two glasses over carefully, 
the situation stays the same. The hot water is always above the cold water. So remember, objects will sink or swim in a liquid depending on their density. And they can even float. This is a thermometer in which we have five different colored spheres. Two swim, two sink or lie on the ground, and one, the green one, actually floats. The density of this green sphere is exactly the same as the density of the liquid. In a real lava lamp, the cold wax has a greater density than the transparent liquid and it first sits on the bottom. However, the wax is heated by the incandescent lamp in the base of the lava lamp. Its density becomes lower and then the wax moves upwards. Then it cools down, its density rises and it goes down again. The cycle. As I said, our lava lamp will be a bubble lamp. First of all, uh, Gray pours oil in our vessel and then he adds water. The water will sink in the oil as predicted because it has a higher density. It's interesting that the water tends to form spherical droplets, a consequence of the so-called surface tension. But that's another topic of its own. Now some piece of advice. When experimenting, please proceed slowly. Do not rush. Observe everything closely. That is what makes a good researcher. And do work preferably near a sink. That makes cleaning up a lot easier. Now the colors come in. Gray mixed all his favorite colors with water and filled them into small bowls. Caution, the colors will stain strongly. It's best to put on old clothes. Gray now takes a little colored water, for example the red colored one, and with the help of the pipette, he drops droplets into the oil. The droplets sink. If you look closely, you can see that air bubbles are stuck on some of them. As a result, they don't sink, but have a, so to speak, lifesaver belt and swim on top of the oil. As I said, take only a few drops. If you use too much of the colors, everything mixes and everything then becomes uniformly black. So far the drops just sank down. Now let's get some movement to it, some buoyancy. Let's take a fizzy tablet, uh, great, don't eat it, a fizzy tablet and break it into several parts. Now put some of it in our lamp. The fizzy tablet will produce carbon dioxide in water. Carbon dioxide is a gas that also makes the bubbles in lemonade and these bubbles naturally rise to the top. Carbon dioxide has a density of 2 grams in 1 liter. It's a little heavier than air, but much, much lighter than water and oil. Now a bubble lamp really gets going. Carbon dioxide bubbles ride in the oil, drag drops of colored water with them. When they reach the top, the gas bubbles burst and the drops of colored water sink again, downwards. And when the tablet has dissolved, simply add a new one. But as I said, slowly. Interesting thing will happen if you use colored liquid soap instead of colored water. Soap has a different surface tension and therefore the drops are no longer spherical, but rather have a kind of tail. Do make your own experiment. Mix the colors, create small and large drops, place a light under the lamp or next to the lamp. Experiment. Have a lot of fun with your lava lamp. Maybe you will take a picture or a short video and send it to us. Gray and I are happy that you were with us today. Until next time.